Okay. And here we are. I guess my head is out of the... Hello guys, hello guys. How are you all doing today? We are going to get started here with the 28th live Friday live. All right guys, the subject of today's live is going to be Gypsy Jazz and the main artist in my opinion, the most important artist of this style would be two. Of course, you also have Burelli the Green, Angel the and such. Very important guys, but in my humble opinion, the, the peak of this style has been the, the Gypsy Jazz, uh, has been the uh, the uh, Jimmy Rosenberg and Stockholm Rosenberg. All right, we got three people here. So um, basically, guys, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about today, um, I actually spoke about it in the lesson about the thumb. Some of it is going to be the same thing, but uh, we're going to go more into the phasing of the style and of these artists that I just mentioned. So basically, guys, the idea is, is this. Since this is a channel that focuses on the nylon string guitar, my style is about the nylon string guitar and the right hand technique. I guess the greatest feature of this live is the fact that you can import the, the specific technique of Gypsy Jazz to your right hand without using the pick. So this is a very interesting point that I'd like to make. Um, making sure I got a nice volume. All right. So basically, the Gypsy Jazz technique is called pick slanting, and it's a very specific technique. This technique uh, is made of you always leaning on the string. You always must be leaning on a string, hence the curvature on the wrist here. You're never, never playing like this, but you're playing like this, kind of like a flamenco style. So you're going to do a curvature on your wrist, and every time you play on a string, you gotta lean towards the next string. So as I play this note, I'm going to go down to the automatically down to the next note. I'm never gonna have my hand flying. It's always lean, and that of course favors the downward stroke. Let me think about it. Grab a guitar player, Oscar. <laughs> hey Oscar, what's up? I think Oscar Malice is incredible. He's got amazing energy, amazing rhythm, amazing personality. <laughs> So basically, this is uh, Oscar. This is about Jimmy Rosenberg today, brother. You want to you want to stick around and listen to this. So basically, the only thing about this technique that um, the good thing is that it helps you swing harder because you're going to use the weight of your arm and you can dig on the notes and extract more sound of the body. Probably this is because um, the gypsies, which is where this technique came from, they didn't um, make use of uh, playing in large theaters or with amplification. They were more accustomed to playing in campfires and family get-togethers. So these guys had to find a way to dig more sound out of the instrument. So that's why this technique... This technique comes into play because it extracts more punch out of the instrument. Now, the hardest thing about this technique is whenever you're going downwards in pitch, going upwards on the strings, and that's exactly the point I want to address. Many times in this technique, you will find yourself having to repeat the downstroke, and that's where the trick lies. This is, where, this is where people have the most difficulty. So I see some people out there sometimes that call themselves gypsy jazz players, but they have missed the point in this uh, particular technique which is definitely part of the language of the style. You cannot, in my opinion, you cannot play authentic gypsy jazz without doing the pig slanting because it just doesn't swing as hard, it doesn't sound, it doesn't give you the accents that you're looking for. 
So here is the first exercise that I'm going to show you how to play first a normal picking style and then the pick slanting. This is one of Jimmy Rosenberg's phrases. I also stock of Rosenberg. These are the two artists that we're going to be quoting from a lot in this lesson. So here's a E minor chord. This is the phrase that they do. So the idea here is that if you are playing regularly with a pick, you would probably do this. Uh, you would pick upwards here. But instead of that, in the pick slanting technique, after you play this note with the upward pick, you're going to do a double down stroke. That's the difference right there, it's this double down stroke. And yes, you are doing a double down stroke while going upwards. So that's very uh, peculiar technique, but just stick with me. This pays off in the end. So uh, another point of the technique, and this is the part that helps you dig with more punch, is when you go down your pigeons, upward your pigeon, right there, and you reach for this note, you're going to again repeat a down stroke here. Like that. See how the down stroke is down, 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 down. But if you're if you're using regular picking technique, you would probably do this. Right? You would do. But since that's the, the hardest part of the phrase, dip is the accented note, you're going to repeat the down stroke because that's gonna give you more punch. And here is where the, the soul of the subject is. If you can understand this, you got the whole thing. When you're repeating the down stroke here, that double down stroke, down, down. The first down stroke is actually a consequence of your arm just moving down. You're not dealing with the thumb muscle. You're just using gravity in your favor to go downwards like this. So it's just gravity. And then when you repeat the stroke, you actually use a different part of your muscle, your hand muscles here, which is the muscle that makes your thumb actually move and go to get that remaining note. So you see that, you, you see my hand only moving, my thumb only moving when I do the last note. The three first ones, the thumb doesn't move, it's just the arm moving down. And here, that's where the thumb really moves. So I would, I would um, suggest you do this exercise for a, a, a many days so you can get the, the hang of this technique. So you would play this. technique as I am showing to you. Here is another phrase from Jimmy and Stockholm Rosenberg because Jimmy copied Stockholm Rosenberg's style. Um, so I'm going to mention the, the, both of their names, but most of this actually came from Stockholm. This is a 2-5-1 lick and again it uses the same technique. I'm going to show you the technique and later in this video I'm going to take a while just improvising. We're going to pick a tune and I'm going to improvise over this tune using this very technique. So here is the phrase. Again, for you to get that language, that swing, that punch, that power is really the best word. See? Double down stroke. Down, up, down, down. Even though you're going upwards in motion, many players will use a sweeping motion like this, right? You'll get your picks and, and move upwards. But then that gets you to miss the, the, the rhythm, miss the point of the 
then they, they wonder why they don't sound like the authentic gypsy jazz players, and this is exactly the secret why. You've got to work on that double downstroke. See? And then, when I do this, I'm reaching for the dominant chord. So I have here the seventh of A minor, seven tonic, seven, slide down to the third, and it becomes the dominant chord. Respond with the tonic. And uh, another thing about the gypsy jazz style is the vibrato. It emulates uh, Edith Piaf, her, her vibrato. It's very short, very fast vibrato. So you go like that, as opposed to, there are many other types of vibrato, but in gypsy jazz, you want to go. Again, ding, is that very intense vibrato. All right. So, having said all of this, um, I'm going to I'm going to suggest before I go into uh, an actual improvisation here, I'm going to suggest one more exercise that's really going to help you get the hang of this. What you're going to do, and this is the most difficult exercise, but it's definitely important. You're going to do a downwards arpeggio, all with downstrokes, downwards in pitch, going from the high to the low, but upwards in motion. So I'm simply going to get an E minor here, and I'm going to do this. like they used to do, all you're gonna do is this, as soon as you reach the tonic, you go back to the leading tone of the fifth. If you don't know what a leading tone is, it is the note that lies just half step below a chord tone. So it's a chromatic approaching you note know, that you use towards any chord tone, to the fifth, to the tonic, to the third. Okay, so leading tone to the fifth, and then upper neighbor of the tonic, resolving down to the tonic. So here's the whole phrase. Again. Double stroke is gonna happen right here. Down, down, see? Now notice my motion. The first note is made from gravity's motion, from arm going downwards. And the, only the second note is that you really use this muscle. See? You see my move, my thumb moving only once. So we got. Another, one last secret that I find very important to mention here from the gypsy jazz is that you need to learn to uh, understand a phrase but be able to execute that phrase starting on any given 16th note. That way you can multiply a phrase by four more phrases or three more phrases. So if I have, for example, I'm going to use this very one here. How about the, with the ending? All right, so that's the phrase. So this is starting on the downbeat. One, two, three, four. Now what if I start the second second sixteenth notes? One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. See, it sounds like a different phrase. I'm gonna start the third sixteenth note. One, two, three, and four, and one. Again, another phrase. Now on the fourth sixteenth note. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Again, four, two, three, four, one, two, three. Now the accent seems to fall right here, right? But still, everything works. Because even though, uh, even if you don't resolve a chord tone on the downbeat, you can do what's called early resolution or delayed resolution. An early resolution is when the chord tone arrives half step, half arrives one sixteenth note earlier than the downbeat. And a delayed resolution is when the chord tone arrives a sixteenth note late. And both of them still work. So actually, this set of rules makes it easier for you to play jazz because you don't have to always worry about putting the chord tone on the downbeat. You can play freely as long as you always resolve you know, the lines 
tune the chord tones. If you always guarantee those resolutions, the function of the notes, upper neighboring or lower neighboring a chord tone, and you arrive at the chord tone, then the phrase is complete. So having said all this, uh, what's up, Kaina? All right. So here is, I'm going to do a little improvisation. Um, I'm going to do a tune, maybe all of me. That's a tune everybody knows. And I'm going to make sure I use only the thumb technique, okay? And what's so cool about this is that actually, actually the technique that I use as an artist, I call hybrid technique, in which I use the picado in three fingers, and I also incorporate the sweeping motion when I do arpeggios downwards. So, uh, but in the hybrid technique, I also use a lot of thumb. So I'm taking this lesson to focus only on the thumb, to, uh, and I'm using the gypsy jazz approach in which you can do completely just with the thumb. So if you can master the thumb technique, later if you incorporate the fingers on the hybrid technique, then you really got a very dangerous technique, a very complete and effective technique. So the thumb technique is very complete by itself. So imagine if you can master the thumb technique and later you will add the three fingers in sweeping and alternating motion. Then you really become what my uh, university teacher used to call a triple threat. Because <laughs> then your technique becomes very complete and you can do a lot of stuff with it. So here is the tune All of Me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present the tune. Maybe I'll sing it to you and then I'll improvise over it. So we got... Uh... lately of course there's always an improvement that can be done but I'm getting started with it I'm showing you that it's possible to play like you have a pick without having a pick as long as you attain to these rules of the pick slanting technique because with the thumb it can be very hard to play upstrokes when it's the first string first stroke on a string so you would never really like sweep with the thumb it seems very odd very weird but uh, so that's the reason why the pick slanting technique from the Gypsy Jazz fits perfectly in the thumb because that pick slanting technique avoids the upstroke on strings when it's the first stroke. Of course, if you are simply uh, alternating strokes on one single string, there's no problem. Like. Here's another way that you can practice. It's 
very difficult. The, one of the most difficult situations that you find in this technique is when you're playing uh, lines of three notes per string going upwards, because then that uh, creates the situation. For example, in a T minor, you have this. That's very difficult to do because as you do three strokes, one, two, three, the last one is a downstroke. And the next one here is going to be a downstroke again because you're never going to start a string on a stroke. That's the rule. So then that requires you to do that double stroke every time. So it's kind of difficult. But it is this kind of situation, these kinds of situations that you're looking for when you're practicing. You're going for the most difficult stuff so that you get it out of the way, right? There's no point in practicing what's easy. You want to choose the hard stuff to practice with. So here's what I'm going to do. Again, from, from higher. When you do this, you're really making sure you get the hardest part because you do that three, uh, triple stroke and having to do the, the double downwards uh, here. Down, 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 down. So, uh, yeah, Oscar, thank you, brother. So, do you see what's happening here? Make sure you practice like this. Of course, when you're going downwards, there's no problem because then you just sweep, right? That's easy, but going upwards is what you want to do. Like on a D minor, maybe. So. That's very hard to do because of that double downstroke. Down, 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 down. solos maybe from dudes like uh, uh, Stockton Rosenberg or Jimmy Rosenberg. It's getting hot here. So let's do it again. Let's do it again. All of me one more time. You guys are welcome to uh, you guys are welcome to um, uh, uh, ask any questions. All right. I'm not getting any questions here guys. So feel free to interact. So here's another set of phrases from all of me. Uh, you took the part that once was my heart, so why not take all of me? I'm thinking here two intervals, fifth and third in C major, and the, the, the doubling goes like this. 
It's hard to do. I chose kind of a hard place to do it. It would have been easier if I had chosen to do between the fifth and the tonic because then it's the same fingering. But I chose to do it here, and it requires me to use the pinky. Sorry. Right there. That's a hard one to do. So if it's hard, then it requires practice. So I'm going to spend a minute doing it right here. And this is a very good um, example to do because it has an even number of notes. It's a four note sequence. So that's very good for the thumb because then it's gonna do up and down, up and down, and the last stroke is gonna be upwards because you got down, up, down, up. So any even number of notes is always to your favor. So that's why you always want to uh, create your phrases and practice your phrases when you're practicing the flow. You're trying to make choices of using phrases with even number of notes per string, such as two notes per string. <laughs> So it fits very easily here. Or four notes per string. So that's four notes per string. So those are options that can always help you. One thing that I thought about is whenever I want to do an arpeggio with a single note per string, you can simply repeat that note, and that is a way out, like this. So it sounds virtuosic, but you're really doing it out of an excuse to make it easier for you because doing this is hard. All down strokes. Very hard to do. So if you do two notes per string, it sounds harder, but it's easier physically. You should practice that way for sure. Um, this phrase that I started with here is another one of those that, that are tricky because, see, the first note, you always want to start with a downstroke, but when you get there, from the movement sequence, you're actually on an upstroke, so you, you end up having to repeat the downstroke to give that punch. So that's the tricky part, which I explained in the beginning of the video, but you want to practice it. So you have this. Look at the downstroke repetition. There. Down, down. Down, down. If you want to cheat, you know, you can, to do faster, you can cheat by pulling off. Then you can go really fast. But then you sort of lose the quality of the gypsy jazz language. Here's cheating. That's cheating. Because I'm pulling off. So if I want to play extra fast, then I'll cheat, but it doesn't make me feel good about myself. <laughs> so it's better to just play it authentically. Then E, E, dominant. No, oh, sorry. A dominant.
fast. Hey, Leonard, how are you? All right, guys. Uh, any questions? I just love the subject, man. I've been practicing this, and I'll tell you a secret. The reason why I'm focusing on this is because I had a little accident with my finger one. So I spent the past two weeks just focusing on playing with the thumb so I can upgrade my thumb technique. And I'm going to play a gig tonight, so I'm actually warming up <laughs> my thumb technique. One of the tunes that I'm going to play tonight is a very fast bebop tune in which I want to kill. It's called That's All Right With Me by, who is it by? Can anybody look it up for me real quick? That is all right with me. Uh, it's by Cole Porter, I just, I just remembered. And this tune is very cool to play on a fast uh, subdivision. I, I transcribed some lines from the great uh, Russell Malone, which I actually had the pleasure of meeting in person in New York. And um, here is how it goes. It's in C minor, kind of a melodic minor type of feel. So you got, it's the wrong time, in the wrong place, no your face is charming, it's the wrong face, is that her face, but such a charming face, that is alright with me, it's the wrong game, with the wrong chips, go oh, your lips, I'm tempting, they're the wrong lips, they're not her lips, but it's such tempting lips, that is alright with me. Section. You can't know how happy I am that we met. I'm strangely attracted to you. Girl, is somebody I'm trying so hard to forget. Don't you wanna forget somebody too? It's the wrong song and the wrong style. Your smile is lovely, is the wrong smile. And that her smile, it's such a lovely smile. That is all right with me. So I started with the phrase. That phrase is very cool because it has an odd, a even number of notes. That's six notes. And then you go over C dominant real quick to go to the fourth degree. C dominant. The hit says a five, a four. Here's the five four, in which you do a dominant arpeggio real quick. That's the double downstrokes. That's the gypsy check technique. Down down, see. starting on the A half diminished. So you got two five to G minor, that's A half diminished, D Phrygian dominant, and then two five to F minor, which is G minor, C7, and then F minor, which is two five to E flat. It's F minor, B flat dominant, and E. So first you gotta practice your arpeggios of those chords. So A half diminished. Yes, and what's that song? Thanks a lot. David, or oh, David, 
uh, this particular, the, the song I was playing before was called All of Me. And this particular one is called That Is All Right With Me. So yeah, I'm doing up and down with the thumb. But the rule here is that you never start a string with an upstroke. You always start with a downstroke. So that's going to create a situation where many times you're going to have to do a double downstroke. If your last stroke on a string was down and you're going for a new string, you got to do a double down stroke. Like in this situation here, I was about to do the B flat dominant arpeggio. Watch this right here. See? That's down, down. See? That's the secret of this technique, is, is being able to pull off that double down stroke when it's needed. Another situation? There. Down, down. Because I had only one note on this string. And then the next string, I'm going to have to start down again. So the rule again is always start on a new string with a down stroke. So that's going to make your picking look like this. I do a little cheating sometimes, which if I have one string alone below that I'm just going to play one note on it, then I actually use this finger. Check it out. See? from having to do another double down because if I didn't use the pink the, the little finger here this is what this is what would happen down down see so I'd like to share with you guys another phrase from a, a Stockel or Rosenberg and Junior Rosenberg to be done here on the dominant chord which goes like this going from the ninth to the tonic, right? And then you got seven, five, three, one. Notice the double down. Down, 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 down. You gotta do this about a hundred times until you start getting the feeling of it. So he, they usually do this, they will go in the notes range between the seventh and the thirteenth, or sixth, right here. Ah. So, now I'm going to try to improvise over that tune. Uh, well, just the, just the B section is what I forgot to tell you. The B section is, is a cycle of fourths and dominant chords. Your target is the E flat, which is the key of the song. So you start on the sixth C dominant, go to the F dominant, which is interpreted as a five or five, and then B flat dominant, which is a five and one. Again, the C. This is the only guy that I don't treat as a natural mixolydian. I, um, it's treated as a Phrygian dominant. Phrygian dominant is basically a mixolydian with a flat 9 and a flat 13. It's also called that way, dominant flat 9, flat 13. It's the fifth mode of the harmonic minor scale. So, uh, any more questions? No more questions? Uh, all right. Um, continuing here, so does the B, the B section. 5 of 2, 5 of 5, 5. One. So five of two, I would use Phrygian dominant. Uh, F dominant, B flat dominant. So it's a 2-5 to C minor. That's the 2. is a D low grand, D half diminished. 
G frigid nominant. So you would obviously treat it as as they are, as such. As the D half diminished, G frigid nominant. And then you're back on C minor. So here we go. I'm going to play the tune a little slower than before and try to improvise over it. And I hope you guys enjoy it and you can see the, uh, the pig slanting gypsy technique into play. I'm going to take it about here. One, two, one, two. There's the wrong time and the wrong things. Just 
Come on. All right. Yeah. If you want to go deeper and be a part of my new group of students, you got that message right there. And also, guys, if you want to go deeper in happiness, you're welcome to donate. <laughs> you're welcome to support the channel by clicking on the button below, uh, the little money sign button there, which you can uh, support these free lives that I've been doing for quite many months now. This is the 28th live, and I'd love to get some comments from, from you guys to uh, give me some suggestions on what I should do the next lives about. Um, I just you know, really enjoy doing this, and I've been enjoying meeting people through these uh, lives and uh, making new friends. So you guys are welcome to uh, suggest different subjects you would like to see in the next lives. Uh, pills cough. Yeah, they do. Actually, pills, believe it or not, that was my thesis and master's degree. I wrote a thesis comparing the technique and the guitar building process, but more, more, most of it was on the technique of the gypsy jazz and flamenco because they use the arched bent wrist technique which allow and, and they also use the slanting technique which in which you always favor the down stroke by leaning constantly leaning so the alsapua technique has a lot in common with the gypsy jazz technique in a way that you are always leaning like this so the flamenco and the gypsy jazz do have a lot in common and it's not realized uh, by many people they think it's totally different styles but no they're not uh, good point um, so, yeah, guys, we have here about 12 more minutes in which I would love to address any questions from you guys. Uh, I would love to, to hear from you guys what you might have enjoyed in this, uh, in this presentation here. There's a live. Um, maybe I'll do some more playing uh, or I can go through some more exercises. But, yeah, uh, I seem to have some difficulty with that B section. Maybe I'll, I'll take some, some time here to uh, run some lines uh, slowly. Uh, in over these these two fives, two five to G minor, two five to F minor, which it's like F major, it's like G Dorian and C Solidian, and then two five to E flat. And uh, I'm gonna play a little slower. You guys are always welcome to go back to this video and watch it slower if you want to pick up any of those licks. The video is gonna stay on my channel for a while. Talking about my channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe. It's been an important process. Uh, for me uh, to develop in the digital world because of the pandemic has been very difficult. There has been no work, no live work. So um, I appreciate any subscriptions. Driving on 575 to Kenton, but I'm, I'm on it. Freaking hot here, like you're playing, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro, thank you for the comment. So here are the lines. Uh, starting on there. So I got 
with a buck or two or 20 <laughs> uh, here in the button just down below. Uh, I should be making a, a new performance video for you guys very soon, as soon as my finger one gets fixed. It's been, uh, it's been uh, uh, hurt by jamming a paper inside between the, the flesh and the nail and it really screwed my finger up. So uh, I'm, I'm waiting another week until it gets better. And as soon as it does, I'm gonna, I have a, a nice arrangement that I've put together to record for you guys in that section of the channel called Brazilian Guitar, in which I've been recording some arrangements uh, about once a month or two months. Uh, there has plenty of very, uh, very cool videos that I'm proud of that I've recorded uh, some arrangements on top of my game, on, on, only on Brazilian pieces. So uh, except the, uh, except the uh, Merceditas, that's actually an Argentinian piece. Uh, guitar C would also be awesome you could manage by thumb mostly all the plectrum attacks and phrases quite comfortably. Guess your flamenco technique of thumb alternate picking helps, right? Uh, yeah, actually, um, um, it is the picking technique that helped me be able to play this because I was a guitar player, electric guitar player for a long time. Uh, so I developed the picking style and then I let go of the pick. And I, uh, so uh, the flamenco is kind of a parallel thing to all of that. I always like playing flamenco, although, although I have sort of abandoned it because I felt like I was copying too much uh, the Spanish people and I'm not really Spanish. Um, so I, I don't know, I just got, got, got kind of got tired of it in a, in a way. Um, but yeah, what helped me play this technique with the thumb is the fact that I played with a pick my whole life. When I got my degrees in jazz, uh, both bachelor's and master's degree, I played with a pick the whole time. But I always carry the, the, the right hand finger style technique parallel to that. Um, so, uh, yeah, guys, that's the idea. There are some very cool patterns that you can throw together if you use uh, what this technique brings 
that is uh, facilitated by the technique, which are the even groupings of notes. So you could do like a Malmsteen run, like this is a Malmsteen lick, right? You could do that pretty fast. Uh, I don't use that too much in jazz, too much in, in jazz, however, because you're playing the notes sort of randomly. Even if you're playing the notes from the scale, you're not addressing chord tones and neighboring tones. That's the difference between a um, uh, dubious, or what's the word, sort of a, uh, uh, yeah, dubious playing, uh, is that the word dubious? Or like playing um, without, without direction. You know, some players believe that just knowing the skill that goes with the chord is enough, but that definitely is not enough. Because um, uh, if, you, if you simply play, um, if you simply play uh, notes out of order, uh, if they're from the right scale, you're not addressing the chord. So in that kind of situation here, it's a kind of a lost way. You, know, you can play it to be impressive if you ever want to do a fast division. That's six duplets. Uh, but then you got to be careful not to use it too much, or else you sound sort of harmonically or melodically lost. So it's something you have to use carefully. Uh, and yes, guys, I appreciate you all being here. I'm gonna say goodbye to you at this moment. Uh, feel free again to make a donation at the button downstairs here below the chat. Uh, very welcome uh, support. Uh, show your appreciation, guys. <laughs> and uh, please write me a message during the week. Uh, uh, write me a message during the week to um, uh, tell me a suggestion on what you'd like me to cover in the next live. All right, guys? So uh, I will be seeing you. I'll be seeing you next week, same time, same place. Okay? Thank you so much, guys. And until next time, bye-bye.